Danielle Cohn has been a social media star since the days of lip sync videos on Musical.ly, when she was just 10 years old. Now, eight years later, she currently has nearly 7 million Instagram followers and 19 million on TikTok. She mostly posts hauls and videos about her lifestyle alongside the classic TikTok dances and lip sync videos. But behind the scenes, a much darker tale is unfolding, with her mother seemingly controlling her social media presence and encouraging her daughter to post pictures in revealing outfits and curating an online presence that sells Danielle's body and pretends that she is older than she is to attract a certain type of audience. It's your Uncle Herman here, I am still an alpha male and also I am starting a second channel where I will be posting more lighthearted and short content very soon so please follow the link in the description to subscribe and turn the notification bell on so that you're the first to know when I post on there. And finally, a little disclaimer, this video is not attempting to defame any of the people that I mention. I am simply spreading spreading awareness of the situation and presenting all of the alleged information that I have found during my research. All of the information that I have found is completely public and I will link my sources in the description below. So in 2016, Danielle Cohn started uploading to the app Musical.ly, an app that merged to become TikTok in 2018. When it started, Musical.ly was very popular with preteens who wanted to dance and lip sync to their favorite songs, and Danielle perfectly fit into this category, being just 10 years old at the time. Though she would later insist that she was two years older than she was, but we'll get into that later. Danielle quickly gained popularity and was one of the first people to surpass 10 million followers on the app. In 2016, she also started a YouTube channel and quickly grew on YouTube as well as Instagram and Musical.ly, now TikTok. In 2017, at age 11, she tried to break into the music scene with her song Marilyn Monroe, and the music went viral on YouTube for all the wrong reasons, to the point where comments had to be turned off. She's since released more music, but it's never really taken off for her, which is kind of a shame because if she had become a more traditional child pop star, there would be way more laws in place to protect her from exploitation, laws that just don't exist for child stars of social media. Danielle, or her mother, quickly found the key to viral success on YouTube with videos where she would try on outfits for someone else, either a boyfriend or a family member, to comment on. These outfits were usually very revealing, sort of clubbing outfits that you would wear in your 20s, not outfits that are aimed at children. And so she gained a completely new audience. Unlike the preteen demographic that were following her on Musical.ly for her simple lip sync videos, there was now a group of older people on YouTube watching her, either out of shock that somebody so young is dressing up in these outfits and putting it online for money, or older males who were going to her videos specifically to see this young child in those outfits. Personally, I do not think that a child that age is able to know the implications of these kinds of videos and the older male audience that it might attract. And she started making these kinds of videos as early as 12 years old, where she dressed up in heavy makeup and revealing clothing. And I don't think that these video ideas would have come to Danielle organically by herself at 12 years old. And the longer it went on, the more revealing the clothing and the more predatory the viewers. For example, this video titled Hot Girl Summer Try On Bikini Haul, posted in May 2021 when she would have been 15 has over 1.2 million views and the most replayed segment of the video by a mile is a close-up of her underage body in a bikini. In fact on any one of these videos you can look at the most replayed section of the video and it will almost always be the part that shows Danielle's body the most. Letting us know exactly the type of audience that she is attracting is almost certainly predatory. It quickly became apparent that Danielle was not the driving force behind her own content and that behind the scenes her mum Jen Archambault is heavily involved as a mummager and in 2017 she quit her day job to become Danielle's manager full-time and move with her to LA. There is a stereotype of stage mums or dance mums in which a mum will get heavily involved in their child's life and push them to have a career at a young age and become young actors, singers, dancers or all three. There are legislations that have been put in place like the Coogan Act that ensure that the parents of these children working in the entertainment industry are keeping a percentage of the child's earnings for that child in their own account or trust fund that they can access when they are 18. This keeps the parents from spending it all themselves. But with social media stars, there are no such laws. There are also no protections against how long the child can work for, meaning that parents of social media stars can make their kids work all day, every day, and keep all of the money that their child is making without breaking any laws. There is evidence to suggest that Danielle's mother is keeping a lot of Danielle's social media money and spending it straight away. Michael Weist, who I will talk more about later, was close to the family and alleges that Jen claims to the IRS that her income is seven figures per year, when in fact all of that money that she is claiming as her own income is her daughter's. 
You know she took out a hundred thousand dollar PPP loan in her name that says she makes seven figures a year. Jen makes seven figures a year according to her tax filing with the IRS, which I recently pulled. And that means this money is not protected. So with her mother, Jen, heavily involved in managing Danielle's social media presence and Danielle essentially being the sole income earner for her and her mother, funding both of their lavish lifestyles, that's a lot of pressure to put on a kid already. But this is just the foundation of a much darker story because what Jen is profiting off of is not just her child singing, dancing or acting, but is instead predators seeing and paying for content of her child's body. Now, the biggest point of contention in this story so far is Danielle's age. Even though there are multiple pieces of evidence that show Danielle was born in 2006, her and her mother still insist that she was born in 2004, and Danielle has always dressed and had her makeup done to appear older. So before we go any further, I want to present the evidence that has surfaced that Danielle was born in 2006 and not, as she claims, 2004. The first piece of evidence comes from Danielle's estranged father, Dustin Cohn, who made a YouTube account where he spoke about how he was concerned for his daughter and posted a video of him holding what he says is her birth certificate that states that Danielle was born on March 7th, 2006. Hey guys, first things first, everybody's been asking about the birth certificate, so here it is. Obviously she is 14, just turned 14 on March 7th. She was born on 2006. Here is the proof. This blew up online, prompting Danielle to post a response. She posted long paragraphs on her Instagram story, basically saying that her dad was chasing his 10 seconds of fame and that she's already told the truth about her age and doesn't need to repeat it. She brings up a lot about her resentment towards him for being absent and for not having a relationship with her, which could indeed be true. But people were quick to point out that what these paragraphs on her story didn't do is give any proof that she is the age that she says she is. But because we don't really know the father's motivations for posting this, and it's clear that he's estranged from the family, I searched for more evidence to support his claims that Danielle was born in 2006. As much as I believe this is a legitimate birth certificate, there is always reason for doubt on the internet. So, on her mother's own accounts, on videos and photos that she has posted before Danielle's fame, it's become clear to me at least that she is lying about her daughter's age. There's a video, for example, posted on Danielle's mother's personal YouTube channel in 2012. The video description reads, my little six-year-old daughter singing karaoke. So if she was six in 2012, that again points to her being born in 2006. There are also photos that were found on a Flickr account under the name Linda Archambault that show hospital photos of her mother, Jennifer Archambault, after giving birth to Danielle. These photos also match photos posted by Jennifer on her own Instagram account. It is presumed that this Flickr account belongs to Danielle's grandmother and it shows hospital photos with the date 7th of March 2006. The hospital wristband also shows the same date correlating with the birth certificate. With this evidence, there is no doubt in my mind that Danielle was born in March 2006 and has therefore just last week turned 18 years old. In a recently published New York Times article titled A Marketplace of Girl Influencers Managed by Mums and Stalked by Men, they investigate this ongoing trend of young girls becoming big on social media, with a particular focus on mum-run Instagram accounts for their daughters. They monitored chat rooms with over 4,000 members where men would gather and trade pictures of underage girls. The article says, men in these groups frequently praise the advent of Instagram as a golden age for child exploitation. I'm so glad for these new mums pimping their daughters out, wrote one of them, and there's an infinite supply of it. Literally just refresh your Instagram explore page, there's fresh preteens. A small group of men go even further and cultivate business and patronage relationships with mothers. One of the mums went on to say that she felt like her daughter had become a currency. And I think this is true for Danielle Cohn. From a young age, she has become a currency for her mother, a way of making more money than she ever imagined. And you can't ignore the fact that a large part of her audience are older men like the ones in the New York Times article, whose interest in Danielle Cohn is encouraged by the kind of things that her mum gets her to post. Now, this is obviously a super dark video and a hard topic to talk about and one that has definitely kept me up at night whilst researching it. So it's super helpful to have this week's sponsor not only to support my research but also genuinely to help me sleep at night. Today's video is sponsored by Manta Sleep, a brand that is proudly pro-nap and anti-hustle culture and therefore very close to my heart as an advocate for mandatory afternoon nap time. Manta Sleep makes sleep masks that help you to nap anytime, any place with maximum comfort. The eye cups give you 100% light blackout and are fully adjusted so you can wear it comfortably and sleep like a baby. You can also get sleep masks with Bluetooth headphones built in so that you can put my videos on in the background and fall asleep to the sweet sound of my voice. To get your hands on your very own sleep mask, be sure to check out the link in the description and use my code Herman at checkout for 10% off your order. And thank you so much again to Manta Sleep for sponsoring this video.
A large part of Danielle's public image since she was just 11 years old has been heavy makeup, dark hair with extensions, and short revealing outfits. Why? Jen or Danielle will say it's just her style, but it has become apparent that Jen has been making her daughter lie about her age to appear older online. For example, we can hear Jen slipping up behind the camera in this live stream where she addresses the audience comment saying that her daughter is only 12 years old before quickly correcting herself and saying 14. Guys, she is 12 years old. Guys, she is 14. <laughs> like, I'm reading all these comments. I don't know. So how can a mother justify not just allowing but profiting off of her young daughter posting revealing pictures and videos online? She must know that it attracts an audience of older males and puts her daughter in danger. If she doesn't know, she must be kidding herself. Here's how she justifies it in a previously unreleased documentary about Danielle and her family. Anywhere. Like, you could go to the beach, you could go to um, the water park, and there's gonna be a person who Thanks like that. You know, that's watching the people. Look. So how is it any different from a kid wearing a bikini what's on the fan to a kid site? wearing a bikini at the water park? You don't know who's around you. It's true. You know, you just have it's to scary. be scared. It is, but you have to be safe with your children out in public. If she's at the house and she wants to wear a bikini in her backyard and take a picture, she's at the house. There's nobody here. And she might post it to the internet, but those men or those women, because women are too, they can't be next so to her. They can't it. touch her. They can't see her. You know? How does that make you feel as a mom and, and like watching your daughter online? How do you protect her? How does that make you feel? Um, look, 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 someone said it. <laughs> mm, I'm a bus. I'm getting my nut to you, lol. I find it interesting that she uses the argument that there will always be creepy men looking at women in bikinis because that is true but there is a huge difference between knowing it and trying to protect your child from these creepy men and deliberately posting photos of your child that caters to those men to make money. We can see how Danielle's mother pushes this justification onto her daughter as Danielle responds to criticism by parroting the exact same argument. You go to the beach and you see a bikini on a person so why does it matter if I post in a bikini? And like everyone's like oh it's because you're this age that age. I don't really think age matters. You go to the freaking pool or the beach and you're gonna see girls in bikinis. Why are people acting like it's some huge thing that's going on? It's really not. Like I see other girls posting in bikinis, other girls posting pictures with their freaking boobs out. I see girls on TikTok literally twerking in bikinis and no one says shit to them, but people say it to me, makes no sense. It's sad to see how Danielle has been repeatedly told that this is okay and has been encouraged to objectify herself for followers, likes, and money. And on top of that, she's been told by her own mother to lie about her age online and to surround herself with older friends and boyfriends. From age 11, she has been made to be perceived as a lot older and more mature than she is. She hasn't really been allowed to just be a kid. Her image has been curated and essentially pimped out by her mother. This all came to a head in 2021 when rumors started to spread that Danielle had started an OnlyFans when she was just 15, pretending to be 17. In reality, it was not an OnlyFans, it was an app called Fanfix that provides exclusive content for paying fans. But people had good reason to align it with OnlyFans because the way that the app is used and the demographic it's aimed towards is fairly similar. Where's most compiled evidence in his video, which I will link below, that shows reviews and comments on the app that heavily suggest this is an app for adult content and was catered towards adult followers of Danielle who wanted to see revealing pictures of this 15-year-old. Not only that, but her mother was completely aware of this behind the scenes and I wouldn't be surprised if she set it up for her daughter as a revenue stream. This would not be the first time that Jen has allegedly set up profiles on adult websites for her daughter. Concerned followers of Danielle found accounts made on multiple websites that had been registered using Jen's email address. It was verified to be her email address as it was the very same contact email that can be found on Danielle's YouTube channel. And in order to create this account, someone would have had to log in and know the password to the email to verify. There is even evidence to suggest that Jen wanted even more controversial fame for her daughter, with plans to have her film a sex tape with her then boyfriend Mikey Tua, who was four years older than her, and leak it online. This was a rumor that Mikey spoke to a now deleted Instagram account known as Corn on the Cone about. He said that this was something that Jen would talk about around him when he was dating her daughter. But he told me, or she, that um, Danny and Jen are trying to have her have some kind of career like, like Kim Kardashian, and that basically they want her to have like a tape leaked. And I responded, and I was like, "That's ridiculous!" Like, you know, she wanted, she wanted, she, she 
talked about it so much while I was dating. And that's what the person said to me. They said, no, they wanted to do it with Mikey and now they're gonna do it with Ethan. And you can ask Katie, she knows all about it. And so I asked your mom and she was like, what? No, I've never heard that before. Like, you know, I've only heard kids talk about it but I never heard them say anything about it. And so then I was thinking like, well, maybe it's because she's a parent. So they would be smart enough not to say it in front of her, but um, okay. So that is like a real thing. Mm -hmm. Okay and Mikey is just one of many boyfriends that have featured on Danielle's social media since 2017 when she was just 11 years old. It quickly became apparent that Danielle's brand thrived when she had a boyfriend. Videos that spoke about her relationship status or clickbaited her relationships pulled in millions of views, but there was a theme in which her boyfriends were a lot older than her. This age gap would not be so serious if it was an adult relationship, but because they were both teenagers, three or four years makes a huge difference, especially in the eyes of the law, as if she was born in 2006, more than and one of her relationships have been statuary and these relationships have not only been condoned but also seemingly encouraged by her mother Jen knowing full well that her daughter was under the age of consent. These boyfriends include Sebastian Tapet whom she publicly dated from 2017 to 2018 when Danielle was just 11 and Sebastian was 17 going on 18 and Mikey Tua who was perhaps her most infamous relationship due to them orchestrating a four-part YouTube prank in which they convinced the internet that they were getting married and that she was pregnant with their child. At the time of this prank Danielle was only 12 years old and Mikey was 16. Mikey and his mom spoke on a podcast about his relationship with Danielle. Absolutely, and from one mom to another, all I cared about is just that all the yeah. kids were taken care of and that they were getting checked out. And, um, you know, we go up to give her medical information. So this is where it begins. They ask her age. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And the answer? And the answer was... 13. Um, 13, right? No. Oh, no, no, no. She... No, no, no. So you were 15, so she was 13. Yeah, yeah so she was 13. I remember saying it on the brain. So, yeah, so she said she was 12 or 13. Well, no, no, that's what her mom had told. The mom had get, her, told the doctors that. Yeah, the mom had told the doctors um, basically that she was born in 2004. And you overheard this. I was right there. I was. Yeah, and also it printed out like on, a her, on her bracelet. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Everything. So this is where the manipulation started. <clears throat> because now I always look back and at that she ended moment. Up, she ended up posting it too. Yes, and I actually, that moment always sticks in my mind because people are like, Katie, how could you have not noticed? You know, you meet people all over and they're like, you know, as a mom, you should have been able to notice these things. And, you know, people should've always want to blame someone, right? right? And it's fine. Um, but I'm like, if you had been in some of the circum, like in the situations that I had been in with this family, you would have believed it too because no mom would ever put their child in harm's way. Right, right. And for this particular injury giving her proper age was necessary was absolutely necessary to her healing surgery could have been involved like, like it yeah. was it was very it was scary got it all of this points to Jen purposefully perpetuating the idea that her daughter is older so that she can get clout for dating older TikTok stars. This older image of her daughter includes putting inappropriate images of her online and allowing her to cover herself in tattoos and piercings to appear older than she is because, of course, you'd have to lie about your age in order to get the tattoos or piercings. And Danielle knows no different. She spoke in a video recently titled I Feel Like I Misunderstood about her body and the comments that she has to read of creepy men online. I feel like I just see so many comments from guys underneath my post and not only are they so disrespectful but I think it's just so unfair that girls are constantly misunderstood by guys for like the simplest things. No doubt that she's been reading comments like these that objectify her since she first started on social media. And this is a girl who has just turned 18, who's not always had control over what photos exist of her online. We can see in this clip that Danielle tries to talk about how her mum posts for her, and Jen is in the background trying to really establish what she doesn't post for Danielle, which she claims is Snapchat and replying to comments. My mom is the one do my YouTube because I'm not that. I don't do your comments and stuff. Well, yeah, but you do like, like the I, I just, posting and stuff. Because yeah. I'm not that like tech. <laughs> no, I do not do it on Snap or anything. So don't say that. No, like you like do the like I do YouTube your thumbnail. posting and stuff. Yeah, I just post it, but I don't do the comments and stuff. People hate on her. No, they hate on me way too much. Are we good? 
Jen has the typical victim mentality of a social media mum exploiting her child. She calls anybody showing concern a hater and refuses to acknowledge that she might be responsible for any damage. CPS have 30 cases against them and have visited their residents to investigate multiple times. But because Danielle insists that she's fine, unfortunately there's nothing they can do. Even though there is significant evidence online to suggest that Danielle is being exploited for money, CPS cannot really get involved, which is frustrating because if you've been doing something since you were 11 years old that has afforded you huge amounts of money and followers and holidays, how would you ever step outside of it and see it for what it really is? As long as she is in this teenage TikTok bubble, it will take her a long time to realize that the things that she has experienced in her childhood have not been normal. The Instagram account known as Corn on the Cone that no longer exists spent a lot of time compiling evidence against Jen and talking to those that were close with or had been close with the family. This account had to be taken down due to threats from Jen. In an interview with Chris Hansen, the owner of the Corn on the Cone account known as as Maggie told Chris that she had received cease and desist in their Instagram DMs along with threats and harassment from Jen. She hired a lawyer supposedly who messaged me on Instagram with a cease and desist and I still don't think that that was legitimate either because I'm pretty sure you can't serve a cease and desist on social media but um, there were a lot of threats, tons of threats of you know we know who you are, we're going to find you and also a lot of lies about who I was. They thought that I figured out, or they figured out who I was. And so they, I mean, they even like pinpointed a specific person and found like her Facebook and people were sending her messages and stuff. And. I mean, that wasn't me, so. Now, Jen is known to send out cease and desist to creators, particularly T channels that talk about her, claiming it's harassment and defamation. But interestingly, she never sent these cease and desists when people were making fun of and coming for her daughter, Danielle, which was a huge trend on YouTube a few years ago when she first went viral as before people started noticing that Danielle's online presence was being heavily controlled by her mother, they were quick to slander and blame Danielle herself, even though she was just a child. At this time when Danielle arguably was actually being harassed and defamed because of what her mother was encouraging her to post online, no cease and desist to any channels were sent, at least none that have been made public to my knowledge. But as soon as Jen's name starts appearing in the conversation and people shift the blame to her, she is very quick to threaten legal action. Not to protect her daughter, but to protect herself. I do not personally believe that Jen has ever had any real interest in protecting her daughter from predators online. I think that she has a narrative in her head that she has spun so that she can live with herself, a narrative where she tells herself that Danielle does what she wants to do, that this is what she's always wanted, and that her photos and videos are no different to wearing a bikini at the beach. I think that she refuses to acknowledge the true ramifications of her actions because to acknowledge it is to admit that you yourself have put your child in danger for the sake of money and that she may never truly recover from how you treated her. I don't think that she will be open to understanding her actions as long as Danielle is making her money. There's significant evidence that she has orchestrated or at least witnessed and condoned literal crimes against her daughter. It's not hate, it's a concern for the victim, which in this case is Danielle. Virginia claims to be a personal friend of Jen and she leaked audio of a heated conversation between herself, Danielle and Jen that went viral online. The audio exposed Danielle for terminating a pregnancy and showed the harmful ways in which Jen had used it against her. I allowed you to have an abortion. I allowed, and this is all the shit that they're saying on there. I allowed so much that I shouldn't have allowed. And it's allowed you to be the person you become and just think it's okay to act the way you can towards me. We don't have a relationship. Oh, can I talk? Just really quick. No, wait. You should care about what your daughter personally feels. Have you sat with your daughter and said, hey, Danny, how do you feel emotionally what you've been through? Because no one has probably sat with her and said, hey, what are you going through? You make disgusting comments about the abortion all the time. You shouldn't. Um, That's the worst thing. You literally said to me, you were like, at least I didn't kill my child. You yeah, literally well, said that you to say mean shit to me. You say that to anger. Okay, but I that's that a difference. Like, no, it's they not. Don't say because you do the same shit to me. And then no, I do it back. You say freaking childish insults is a, a difference. No, it's not. Literally, literally, you say a lot worse shit. a topic shit. that you know that You say a lot worse shit. Don't even go there with don't even go there with me. No. You know it. Okay, Danny, whatever. The abortion is probably like the hardest subject for me to talk about. And you it's always bring it up. 
Following this, Virginia did several interviews on podcasts and on YouTube to tell her side of the story. In one interview with the Dad Challenge podcast, she details that she got to know the family because her daughter was friends with Danielle in elementary school, and during this time, as their daughters became close, Virginia and Jen also became close friends. She talks about the concerning behaviour from Jen that she witnessed as she watched Danielle grow up. Virginia also makes a very disturbing allegation, saying that Jen spent $20,000 hiring a private investigator to set up cameras in 13-year-old Danielle's room to try and prove to CPS that Danielle and Mikey were not having intercourse. It's especially disturbing to know that Jen had cameras put in their room, given Mikey's testimony that Jen was trying to have them create a tape that she could leak online. I mean, she just spent over $20,000 hiring a private investigator of Danielle's money. And she told Danielle it was about $3,000. And it was $20,000 for this private investigator to put cameras in a 13-year-old's bedroom. Oh, she hired a private investigator to investigate Danielle? to investigate Danielle to make sure because CPS wanted to make sure that Danielle is not having intercourse with Mikey. So Jennifer hired a private investigator to put cameras in her daughter's wow. room and through the house to show that that wasn't going on. That's sick. I think that regardless of Virginia's motivations here, whether you think she's doing it out of legitimate concern for Danielle or not, the audio alone that was leaked was extremely telling of how Jen treats her daughter. And to claim that you insult your teenage daughter because she says the same kind of things to you is not an excuse. You're the adult in the situation and there is never an excuse to use language like that against your daughter, in my opinion. Now, I can't really make a video about Danielle Cohn without mentioning Michael Weist, who has posted hours of content on his YouTube channel that aims to expose Danielle's mother for exploiting her daughter. Now, Michael Weist, or Michael Gordon Weist III, is an entrepreneur, technically. He has started many, many businesses, likely using startup money from Michael Gordon Weist II and I, just a guess. And though he mainly manages social media and TikTok talent, his website also states that you can email him about real estate, and insurance. No specifics, just general questions, I guess. He's been working overtime to repair his image after being the mastermind behind the disaster that was TanaCon in 2018 that ended in him filing his company for bankruptcy. Since then, he's apparently managed Danielle Cohn, but the more I look into it, the more it seems like he just spent a lot of time with Danielle and invested his own personal money paying for things like parties for her, and then it turned out that she was actually managed by someone else and was hiding it from him, allegedly, and therefore could not be taken on by Michael at the same time. Time. But during these months that he spent living with Danielle, again, not a normal thing for a manager to do, he claims that he got to know her and her mother pretty well, and that this sparked a lot of red flags for him. Again, I don't really know what to think of this guy because if I was living with a family that I was doing business with and I noticed issues as big as these, I would be very wary of doing business with them. He has also said on Chris Hansen's documentary that he believes that Danielle is being sex trafficked by her mother. I think she They're literally like traffics her daughter for like a, a lack of better she did well lie. that's an interesting question in, in and i want you to come in on that michael in just a minute but katie was your son dragged into an illicit sexual relationship by daniel's mother i definitely believe that jennifer encouraged certain behaviors and she did misrepresent um how old danielle and Daniel was. If he so firmly believes this, I do have to question why he wanted to work with her mother in the first place after discovering this and why he wanted to help her make money from Danielle's social media. It seems like if she wasn't with this other management that he would have been on board and he would have managed Danielle. Something about this relationship just doesn't add up for me and it seems extremely unprofessional to live with a client and she wasn't even ever officially his client. So I do take his testimonies with a pinch of salt but since he was close with the family and has made so much content about them, I have to include some of the things that he has said in his videos. In his first video posted in 2021, titled The Truth About My Client, Danielle Cohn, he talks about his close relationship with Danielle as a client and the behavior that he noticed from her mother. In response to this, Danielle posted a 37 minute long unedited video titled The Full Truth and My Experience with the Worst Manager, where she assures her audience that everything that she posts is what she wants to post and that her mother is supportive and not forceful. She then accuses Michael of being romantically interested in her boyfriend at the time, Mason, and trying to pull 
pull her and Mason apart. Mason Patterson is another TikTok star who was in an illegal relationship with Danielle when she was 15 and he was 19. Michael claims that he had no interest in Mason and was concerned about their relationship due to the illegality of it. Danielle also makes some very serious allegations against Michael saying that her brother has been assaulted by him and that he has a history of preying on younger straight boys. I don't know if you guys have heard the stories, but there's been a lot of people, including my adopted brother, I'm sure you guys all know him, that have claimed that they have been sexually assaulted by Michael East. And I didn't believe it until I started seeing how he was with Mason and how he was with this assistant guy because he was literally like trying to force them to be like gay for him. And it was really fucked up because me and Mason were already a thing and he was trying to literally sabotage it. And then whatever, he started texting me saying he was gonna sue me, blah, 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 for defamation of his name. I didn't say shit about his name until now, until he made a video about me. In Michael's follow-up video titled The End of Danielle Cohn's Lies, he tries to refute all of Danielle's points. Now, I do have a problem with the way that Michael drags this child's name, saying that she's homophobic and that she is lying about her sexuality and so forth. I think that it's very irresponsible to start rumors like this about a child when you're the adult in the situation, especially when it's not relevant at all. She said that she had had no so she know what it feels like to be a woman and that no man dressed in women's clothing could ever be a real woman. And we were all speechless and i am speechless now that you could say something like that and claim to be pan it makes no sense we've all heard you danielle we've all know the truth there was no reason to bring this up and spread these accusations about a child's sexuality not to mention that in both of these video titles he's coming for danielle knowing that she's a child rather than her mother who he says he has a problem with it also seems unnecessary to me to make this a public feud with the daughter in question who is being exploited so overall, I think that Michael Weist is a bit of a sketchy guy, but I think that the conversation that he had with Mikey Tua and Mikey's mum is quite interesting and I will link that below if you want to hear more of their side of the story. As of making this video, Danielle has just turned 18, but still insists that she's actually just turned 20 and is very ambiguous about her age. She's currently engaged to her boyfriend, Brandon, whose age is unknown. I can only hope that as she matures that what she went through online as a minor is not forgotten because as long as this is a way that young girls can make money, it will keep happening. Obviously, it's the men looking for and circulating these images that are the problem, but it is also a parent's responsibility to protect their underage children from being exposed to this and to make money off of this audience by selling them your child's body is almost as sick as the audience itself. We can't ignore that it's also a responsibility of the platforms like Instagram and TikTok to protect their young users, but historically the rules that they have tried to put in place to counteract these things are easy to circumvent and very rarely effective. This is a business and it's one that Daniel Cohn's mother has profited off for years. She can tell herself that the men looking at her daughter are just a minority. She can tell herself that this is what her daughter wants, that she is posting what she wants now, that the exploitation is a small price to pay for the fame and the money that it brings. But at the end of the day, what she has taught Danielle is that her body is her currency, that the gateway to money and fame and her lifestyle is selling her body. And no child can fully consent to these pictures being online. She doesn't know the implications of it. She doesn't know what her pictures are being used for and how violating that is. And just because she's turned 18 doesn't magically mean that she's going to have all of that adult knowledge now. Her frontal lobe is literally still developing. As long as this keeps being a lucrative business, people will keep exploiting their daughters for money and I hope that there will be more investigations into it and legislations that can finally call for definitive laws that make it illegal for parents to do this in the first place but for a lot of children in this first wave of social media stardom it's far too late and I can't imagine what it's going to be like as they age into adulthood and have to grieve for that childhood that they never got to have. I've been your Uncle Herman. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Please do like and comment. I love reading your comments and it really helps push the video out to more people. Thank you again to Manta Sleep for sponsoring this video and don't forget to check out my second channel where I will be posting very soon. 